Moving on to Aaron's question next. You say Aaron? Aaron. Okay. A A R O N. A A R O N. He says, I am not planning on retiring before 59 and a half. I don't need a bridge account. Should I continue to max out my Roth IRA, HSA, and not have anything in taxable? I feel like I don't need taxable. Am mm. I missing something? Yes. Do tell. <laughs> you sound very confident. About I mean, that. look, I, I have clients that love the tax savings of retirement accounts, but I'm just telling you, you need some taxable holdings just because it's it's just the easiest access point for not only just paying your living expenses, but also if you come across once in a lifetime investments, it's just it doesn't have the the drag that retirement accounts mm -hmm. have. Uh, let me let me put it this way. When you pull money out of tax-deferred accounts, that's your 401ks and other things, you just know you're going to pay ordinary income tax rates. And that hurts because usually those are your higher tax rates. Roth money, yes, you could get access to that. You could even get access to the capital of the initial contributions, probably tax-free. But you're going to find that, especially if you're good with math and numbers, you hate taking money out of Roth because that tax-free growth, there's a reason the government's restricting how much you can put in each year is because, man, when it hits critical mass... It feels so sweet watching that account mm -hmm. grow 10,000, 100,000, whatever it is, one depend upon the size, completely tax free. So you, you, you kind of hesitate to want to grab that first, too. So that leaves having the taxable just to so you, you own your life, is, is what I look at it as. Taxable, I know you say you don't need a bridge account, but man, do I like having a strong emergency reserves and access to capital. Um, and that's what the taxable accounts are going to allow you to do. I agree with you. Mm. But, uh, but, mm. but there's a big I, but, but see, coming. See, Aaron threw this thing on the end. He's like, oh, I don't, I'm not going to talk 59 and a half. Should I keep funding Roth and HSA? The thing that's so unique about Roth and HSA, they are those tax free accounts. So right? he, you're saying he's much younger and still in the step five of the financial well, order of operations. Uh, that's something, that's, yeah, I probably so, just overlooked. So now I'm thinking is when he's thinking about building a taxable account, is he making the. Is he having to make the decision, I can either put money into Roth and HSA or put it into a taxable account? In that scenario, man, this is where, because I agree with you completely. If we're talking about pre-tax accounts. You get retired, it's very expensive to go buy a car. It's going to cost you the car plus the taxes to pull it out. But with Roths and HSAs, those dollars can come out tax-free. And while I agree that they are the most valuable asset you have, you want them to grow as long as possible, in terms of getting them funded, if I'm thinking through beginning to build a taxable bridge account or continue to pile those dollars into the tax-free, I see where Aaron's coming from because even getting those dollars into the tax-free, when you get to 59 and a half, there is no tax drag. And hopefully that tax-free bucket is just big enough that, yeah, you're having to pull from it. But I think having those dollars in the accounts and funded would probably be okay in this scenario so long as you don't, as long as you know that you know that you know, you won't need to leave before 59 and a half. Now, yes, you can you know pull what fixes out of the all this? basis and that kind of stuff. You know what fixes all this? Save more, do more, both. There's a system. There it is. Oh, the financial order of operations, because you know what? Step four is going to make sure you have enough in that after-tax emergency fund that you have all the access points that I was talking about. And then I, I misunderstood. I thought we were beyond, so I, I missed that part. If Aaron is, step, is still in step five, with the Roth and HSA, yeah, get in there. There's a reason Love I was that. just telling you nobody wants to touch that. It's because it's so good. So you need to go take advantage of what the government's offering you. Step six, the the you know max out your retirement accounts, getting to to 25 percent investment rate at a tax favored way. It's really a step seven, and that's where I was maybe giving you too much credit, Aaron. Is that I thought you were already kind of thinking about how you're going to use this money in retirement. Um, so step seven is where you think about the three mm -hmm. buckets, where it's after tax money, the tax deferred money, and then the tax free Roth money. Um, maybe I skipped a step there. I should have known the, the the foo is your way of what to do with your next dollar. Love it.